Hi guys, this is Chip Dillard, Pro Staff with ThermalHunting.com. What I want to talk about today is just do a brief overview of the Pulsar Thermion 2 Pro scope. And this particular unit that I'm running has the laser rangefinder as well. Now first, I want to show a couple of differences between the Thermion 2, which looks more like a rifle scope, and what I used to run, which was the Pulsar Trail 2, uh, in particular the button locations. These, the button locations on the Trail 2 are very similar to the Helion 2 scanner that I run. So I was very comfortable with this setup because in the dark, buttons are hard to find or it's, it's easy to find the buttons if you know the locations and what they control. It was easy for me because of my familiarity with the Helion 2 to use this. And it, and it took the same battery as well. But if you'll notice on the Thermion 2, it's, it's a whole different setup as far as the buttons. All right, I'd like to show you up close some of the features and the buttons on the Thermion 2 Pro. Up top, this is where you have your zoom and you, you press it multiple times to get 4 power, 8 power, 16 power, and you'll hold it down briefly for uh, your picture-in-picture -picture function. This is your rangefinder function. You'll press and hold that, and there will be a small red box out in your scope that you'll see through your viewfinder, and that will be what you, if you put it on a tree, it will show you the distance to that tree. The record button is here. Press it once, record, press it briefly, and it will pause, and you press it for a long second, and it will stop. So in contrast to the Thermion 2, this is the trail setup for the scope. You'll notice the buttons, it's a whole different format and locations of the buttons. This took me a little while to get used to. This is very similar on the trail as to the Helion scanner, handheld thermal scanner. It uses the same battery, same buttons all in alignment. Um, so that just takes getting used to if you're going from a trail to the Thermion. Now moving up the scope, we have the compartment for the external battery. This particular battery is the APS-2. This is what I have been running and I would typically go through up to three of those a night depending on how much recording I do. Now this is a extended life battery, the APS-3. <clears throat> it has a different end cap because you need a taller cap. So if you're going to purchase one of these separately, be sure to request the extended cap. Okay, so I'm going to take that back out, put the other one back in, the way I had it before. Okay, and it has an internal battery. To charge the internal battery, you take this cap off, and you connect your connector right there. I think it's a C adapter that you can charge it right there and also I, I use this as my my uh, export feature to my laptop when I'm downloading videos I will typically download videos all to my laptop not to de de degrade the clarity of the video if you if you do it to your iPhone it's probably going to compress that file and you'll probably lose some uh, quality to the video there on the other side from this knob is your menu knob and you you would use a press feature to navigate the menu and also you would use this to dial through the menu options you rotate this knob now the power button is located here like most if not all the pulsar products you would hold that down for three seconds to completely power it off. It does have a standby mode where you press it just for one second and the display 
screen will go black, which helps you save some power. The same thing in my Helion 2 Pro scanner. This is your adjustment for focus, and it's uh, it has it on has a control knob on left or right. The same thing on the other side. This allows you to control your the focus of your object that you're looking at. While we're talking about that, let's move back to the scope here. This is your diopter focus, which you want to focus that first to your eye to the numbers that you're reading on the display inside the scope. So you first get this focused and where you can read the numbers correctly, then you'll want to adjust this out here. It's the same thing with the handheld scanners that Pulsar offers. So that's it in a nutshell, and then you've got your, your lens cap. I leave mine open most of the night, if not all night, when I'm hunting. But that pretty much covers all the external features that you needed to see up close on the scope. But pretty much, pretty much that's it as far as the externals. Now to look on the internals and look at the screen and, the, and what the menu has, I'm going to show you how, you how you do that. First of all, you got to turn the scope on. I'm going to turn the scope on and then I'm going to and there's a menu button over here on, on the other side of this button. There's a menu button you just push in and then you'll see a menu and I'm going to go down to the Wi-Fi and turn it on. And once you have that on you want to go to your mobile device. In this case I'm using my iPad. You go to settings you go to uh, Wi-Fi, and it should pick up. There's the Thermion. Pick that up. And then once that's picked up, then I'm going to go out and go to my StreamVision 2 app. I'm going to open that up, and it says Connect Device. There is my scope. There is the Viewfinder. Okay, let me let me uh, let me flip open this so you can just see. Let's see what I'm looking at over there. Some boxes. Let me see if I can get it on the doorknob. All right, it's on the doorknob right now. Now, <clears throat> let's just play with a couple of things. I'm not going to show you everything in this, but I do want to show you how easy it is to to brighten up your scope. There you can see the difference in the brightness. I'm going to adjust that again. That's up to, you can see that doorknob now. I'm going to go back down. I like mine on about nine when I'm hunting at night. Then on the contrast, I, I, I like mine anywhere from 10 to 12 to 13. I'm just going to put it on 11 for now. Here's your, your zoom. Now you can do a manual zoom even though in your scope settings when you push it on the button up here when you're doing your zoom, it'll go uh, 4 power, 8 power, and 16 power or your, your upgrades or your magnifiers on your on your button here but inside here and I didn't know this until recently because I hadn't played with it you can go up to any any adjustment as far as doesn't have to be an even multiplier of the two okay and then your picture in picture it's got that <clears throat> I want to see if this I want to see what this does all right, so that takes the picture and picture off. That puts it back on. You can multiply. See, then it takes it's taking it back to the the default settings of four, and then eight in the picture. You know, the, the small picture, and then sixteen. You'll rarely use the sixteen if it's you're going to zoom in. Some of the guys 
on Facebook tease me about zooming a lot. I like to zoom in as tight as possible. So I'm I'm all, I'm using four and eight quite often, but I I will occasionally use sixteen if he's out there two hundred or more, and I'm trying to reach out. But and then you can take the picture and picture back off by just pushing the magnifier button and holding it down. You can hold it down again, and it'll put your picture and picture back up. Okay, let's talk about. The reticle type, I particularly like the H50i reticle. You've got multiple ones to choose from. But that's, excuse me, that's the one that I particularly like. And I also like the reticle color of green. You have different colors to choose from. more than you'll ever use you you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna find one that's that suits your eye or fits your eye and that's the one you're gonna go with so I like green the reticle brightness you'll want to have that up there eight or nine okay here's one important thing the amplification level I had a buddy in Virginia Stevie Clark who'd recently bought a Thermion 2 Pro and he called me and said hey I'm not getting the vi the video Christmas that you've got on yours he said what am I what am I doing so we went in there and we, we played with this you've got <clears throat> you've got normal you've got high and you've got ultra I run mine on ultra all the time that gives me the crisper image that's what I would suggest using. I do not know if that uses more power or not. I'm assuming that it does because my battery life is probably a two, two to three hours max on one of the uh, APS twos that I've been running. So typically I'll run, I'll carry three batteries with me for that external battery that goes in here. If it's, an, if it's the APS two, I'll carry three of those, or one in the scope, and carry two with me for use during the night if I'm going to hunt all night. If you're only going to hunt for, you know, three or four hours, you won't need more than two of those. And now you've got the uh, APS this APS three battery, which should have a significantly more battery life. I haven't used one yet. I'm looking. F I'm eager to try that because I don't like seeing that battery level indicator go down too fast. So, <clears throat> but once again, on the amplification level, I use the Ultra. You might want to play with that yourself, and you might choose the high setting. Uh, the distance, I've just got mine set at, at you know, 100 yards. As far as sighting in the scope... You, you, there is a one-shot zero feature for the scope. And if you want to use that feature, there are some instructions within the manual about how to do that. There's also some other YouTube videos from Pulsar about how to do that. That's not the way I do it. I typically set up about 30 yards from a target, and I'll put a round or maybe two out there and have enough paper around my, 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 my hot pocket or hand warmer that I'm shooting at so that I'll know where I am, and then I can make an adjustment at that point. Then I'll back up to 100 yards, and I have a little book that I have with me, a little hardback book, and I keep track of my X and Y coordinates, and I will, I'll just keep making new notations of my X and Ys as I change them. And so then I have a record of it. I put a date in the book. I'm old school. That's just the way I do it. But I feel like that's a more accurate way. Even if you use the one-shot zero, once you get it close, you're still going to have to adjust those coordinates to get really tight, if you're, especially if you're taking longer shots. And by longer, I mean anything over 125 yards. You're going you're gonna to really want to 
get tight on that accuracy, and, and, and you're going to have you want you're, you're going to want to have good coordinates. I sight mine in at 100 yards, and if I'm within oh half inch, three quarters of an inch, even an inch high at 100 yards, at least you. And if you're consistent, you know where you are. So that way, if you've got some of those longer shots, then you won't have to hold too highly on the back. But that's some of the brief overview of a lot of the features that are in the scope as far as being able to access them through an iPad or your phone. You can go up here to settings. Now here's the zero profile. I'll just show you. Well, it's not. Okay, so. Oh, uh, let, me, let me show you one more thing. The smoothing filter. Okay, I have, I have my smoothing filter turned off. Let me see. Let me show you. Let me let me go back to the to the viewing. Let me see if I can adjust it in the scope so you can see the difference in the smoothing filter. Okay, that's on. That's off. Off. I leave mine off on the smoothing filter because I think when you leave it off, it gives you a sharper, more crisp image. That's something that uh, Stevie Clark also did. He, he, he turned his smoothing filter off. So turn your smoothing filter off and set your... Um, hold on just a sec. And set your amplification level to ultra instead of standard or high. But that's basically it as far as, you know, I don't want to go into a lot of specs on the, on the scope. It's, it's got a 640 sensor. It's, uh, the, uh, the pixel pitch is uh, 17 microns. It's, to me, it's the best scope that I've used. I've tried a couple other brands. This is what I like. The, the, only, the only drawback to it was getting used to the buttons because they're in a different location and you're doing it at night. And the battery life isn't quite what I wanted it to be or what it'd like it to be, but I'm, I'm excited about trying the new extended life battery. So that's about it for now. But we appreciate you watching. Once again, you can go to thermalhunting.com for any of your scope scanner, tripod, drone, apparel needs, or come by the store in Warrior, Alabama. We'd love to see you drop in. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time.